I designed the plate to kind of like give like a monochromatic feel. When it comes to my food, I try not to limit myself. When somebody says that I make Mexican food, or that, I'm a me that I'm a chef who cooks Mexican food, it already limits what I can do because most of America has a certain idea of Mexican food. And even Mexicans within the US have their own narrow idea of what Mexican food is and can be. And I think that that never really applied to me. Uh, so we're at O Studio in bed slash Bushwick. And every month they've been featuring different chefs and kind of highlighting our stories within cooking. I understand Mexican food in the terms of like a Chicano culture, just like typical like Northern California, Mexican American culture. Uh, and then I understand it in the terms of like living in rural Mexico and growing your own ingredients. It's like classic corn cake, beautiful grandma's recipe. And then you have like this like weird passion fruit looking thing, which you probably would never really see. It's almost like over a this. yolk spilling over. Exactly, yeah. And so Chile con miel is sort of a space in which I express almost like the marriage of those two experiences. Hi, my name is Tony Ortiz. I am a chef and artist and the founder of Chile con Miel, which is a culinary platform based in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, so for this dish, um, I thought about this snack that my grandma always used to make. And it's basically green apples with fresh lemon juice and salt sprinkled over it. And so I thought of making an agua chile with green apple to kind of like um, showcase those similar flavors. It's just a flavor that reminds me of childhood. I think growing up, I just knew that there was something in me that really wanted to like express itself. And I'm not sure that I knew how to exactly do that. Once I started cooking, I think that kind of showed me that that was the correct way for me to go about it. Would your grandma like this dish? I think she would love it. <laughs> Chile con miel started as me kind of just expressing my cultural interest in um, generational ancestral knowledge. I have done a lot of work around letting feminine and masculine energy kind of exist within me um, in a harmonious way. And the name actually comes from the idea of this aggressive sort of like flavor, chiles, um, kind of like being balanced with honey, which is to me romantic and almost like feminine. I see it as bringing this part of the past in which queerness was not really a thing. I mean, it was, but you know, it wasn't accepted at all. But for me as a queer person, I am sort of translating these generational recipes and techniques into the present day through my lens, uh, through my experience. I grew up like in between my mom and my dad's family. I lived with my mom until I was about 18, and then I moved with my grandparents. A lot of my cooking also comes from trauma. It came from necessity. Like I, when I lived with my mom, uh, we were very poor, and I grew up with like barely food in the pantry, nothing really in the fridge, but like a gallon of milk and cheese. And um, I had to make dishes out of nothing. The reason why I am, I think, so passionate about food, but also like so deep, is because 
I experienced a time in my life where like food was, is, it was not a thing. Like for the dinner at the James Beard house, I made like those little pinwheels. And those are called duraditos. And duraditos are like the cheapest Mexican street snack you can find in California, and I'm probably in New York as well. And I intentionally put those on a tasting menu in the James Beard house because I was like, this is a part of my Chicano culture. And so I really wanted to just like throw it in people's faces. I want people who relate to those ingredients and those dishes to see what I'm doing and to see where I'm doing it at because I know that they will understand why I'm doing it. This is also who I am. This made you scrappy. It made me very scrappy. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the reason why I can tolerate a lot of stress, you know, and I, I can take care of myself. Wait, what is, what is our kitchen name again? The dollhouse. Hey. The dollhouse. The dollhouse. Okay. When I went to my grandparents and I tasted the food that they made, there was so much soul and like so many memory and stories behind these recipes that they were cooking. A lot of like slow cooked sauces, like really beautiful like chili sauces, uh, moles and stuff like this. And that's kind of where the idea started. I'm really happy that everybody is here. This menu is kind of like a translation of how I see Mexican cuisine, but it also embodies uh, the core of my culinary talent, which comes from my grandmother and my grandfather. Well, what called me to New York was the idea of radical change. New York is teaching me to thrive. My experience here around food has been understanding how to make food edgy. When it comes to my plating, I feel like I, I like to be dramatic. I like for people to get a plate and for them to be like, oh my God, like what is this? Like what's going on? And it's very colorful. I'm huge on textures. I'm huge on height. That's the vibe here. It's a very important moment for me as a queer third generation Mexican American to be in this house that was owned by an iconic queer chef. I remember the first couple of pop-ups, somebody was like, I've never tasted Mexican food that like tasted like that. It wasn't a burn, it was like, that was amazing, and I had never tasted Mexican food in that way, that you're presenting it. And so I think that that's something that's been really special about being here. So it feels great uh, when people use the word like rising chef or stars and things like that. It feels amazing because I've been working very hard to feel seen in those ways. Salud. Salud. But at the same time, I want to make sure that what I'm building is sustainable. That's the most important thing for me, is how am I going to make long-term impact um, with the time that I have in this world. That's it for this episode of Food Curated. I'm Liza DeGia. Be sure to connect with us on social media and eat more stories. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.